Ms. Alirizar, I want you to help us understand the result of the recent parliamentary election and its impact on the possible direction of Turkish foreign policy. Well, it was a surprise even to the, uh, the ruling party itself. They were expecting, according to Prime Minister Davutoglu, around 43-44% of the, of the vote. Only one opinion poll suggested that they would get anything higher than that, and even that was 47%, and they ended up with over 49% of the vote. So uh, whether this brings stability uh, is another question, but obviously the, uh, uh, this party knows how to win elections. Uh, the fact that, uh, that there was the insecurity in the country, there was the chaos brought on by the uh, struggles against both the PKK and the um, uh, ISIS uh, uh, led people to uh, uh, choose stability. And uh, we'll see whether it does bring stability or uh, the various problems that you identified actually uh, create even more problems for this government uh, in the future. Mm. Mr. Pishak, do you agree with what uh, Mr. Ali Rezar just said? Uh, hello from Istanbul. Good to see you, sir. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, first of all I, I would like to say that the, the results are not very much surprising for me because um, it, it is very very actual point that if you consider the last uh, 50 years in Turkey in the general elections uh, the uh, Technical, from the technical point of view, uh, general election results, which is beginning from the multi-party political system in Turkey, unchanged ratio, uh, and the conservative votes and the left-wing votes in Turkey. So, uh, the uh, international political. Uh, lines and the other uh, ways even in the internal politics, will not change dramatically from my point of view. Mm, I see. Mr. Godemont, though, Turkish approach to the EU has always been an interesting one, and EU's attitude as a result toward Turkey has always been a long-time hot topic. As a result of uh, the recent parliamentary election and victory, and a huge ma minority, majority rather, inside the country. Do you think that picture is likely to change? Well, first let's say the elections were a surprise, but perhaps not a shock to the EU and to Europeans, since over the past few months and the refugee crisis, the relationship between the EU and Turkey had been getting closer and warmer and the criticism fading away. Uh, Chancellor Merkel's visit, you know, where she uh, uh, announced uh, a reopening uh, of the negotiations for joining the EU by Turkey, is clearly a boost to President Erdogan's uh, party because in the past, you know, what the Turkish voters may have thought was that his Islamist or radical tendencies were getting them even further away from the EU. But if the leader of the biggest country in the EU says that uh, because we need Turkey, we're going to reopen negotiations, well, that sort of legitimizes uh, what Mr. Erdogan has been doing. Mm. Uh, and I think it's a, it, it's, it, it, it is a clear choice of stability that Europe did, I would say, out of need rather than out of outright preference. I the see. second thing is, of course, the violence. Uh, there, I must say, I remain a little bit surprised uh, because it's so clear that President Erdogan has been playing a strange game, not really fighting ISIS, uh, not really fighting uh, Syrian President Assad, uh, but using his forces against the Kurds. And I note that the only force that gained, apart from his party uh, in parliament, is the peaceful, certainly not uh, violent, but peaceful pro-Kurdish party, so that we do have something of a, of a tug, something of a split there. Uh, and the real question is, will Erdogan, you know, exceed his victory, uh, or will he be magnanimous? Mm. Mr. Bishar, what do you make of the Kurdish issue and the long-time standing attitude coming from 
AKP toward the Kurdish issue. And meanwhile, Mr. Erdogan's stance, his own stance, on an issue which has been quite long existing in your country. Okay, thank you, thank you for the question, but uh, your question is a little bit uh, freaky because we, we are uh, saying that <laughs> Turkey has the no Kurdish problem. Okay, Turkey whatever way no you Kurdish. want to express Turkey it. Has just tell me the <laughs> answer. I think the answer Turkey is more important Turkey, than the yeah, way to phrase yeah. it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Turkey, Turkey has the very big terror problem. You know, in, in this month, uh, the G20 summit will be, take, uh, will be uh, placed in Turkey. So uh, last uh, week, Turkey uh, asked to insert the two main other agenda items to the uh, general uh, summit items. One of them is counterterrorism, and the second one is the uh, refugee problem. So it means that Turkey waiting uh, some positive approach and positive results from the G20, means that from the international community. Turkey has the uh, terrorist problem in Turkey, and near Turkey, close to Turkish borders, even uh, either from the IS, Islamic State, or the PKK, or the sub uh, units of the PKK, PYD, or whatever. Turkey has no Kurdish problem for in the first first word, I, I would like to say. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ali Reza, use your way to frame the issue, or to phrase the issue as well. And secondly, let me just be specific. We've seen Turkey send jets to do some military missions in northern Iraq against some of the Kurdish rebel groups over there. But at the same time, the AKP, the party that has just won the election, has been dovish, as many believe, toward the Turkish, the Kurdish rather, over the years. Meanwhile, you also see President Erdogan from Turkey has his own version of how to handle issues like that. I didn't use the word problem. I'm rather using the word issue. So, Mr. Ali Reza, what is the phrase you want to use and what kind of frame you want to use when look at this? I have no problem using the expression Kurdish problem because <laughs> there is a Kurdish problem inside Turkey. Um, the, uh, the fact that the, uh, the government uh, uh, between 2013 and 2015 was trying to tackle it through a, a, a peace process meant that it also understood the need to deal with this uh, through negotiations. Now those negotiations collapsed in, uh, in July and we have a, an ongoing uh, struggle yet again with the, with the PKK. Sure, uh, the PKK is on the terrorist list uh, of many countries around the world, including the United States where I'm speaking from. But there is also widespread recognition um, outside the country and to a great extent by the Erdogan government prior to uh, July 2015 that the issue needs to be de dealt with through negotiations. Now, eventually, the negotiations are, are going to be resumed. The guns will fall silent. And, uh, and what needs to be done is to tackle the root causes of, of this problem, uh, socioeconomic and otherwise. Now, the fact that there is uh, greater attention to uh, the Syrian Kurds, particularly the PYD, mm. and the fact that the United States uh, and uh, uh, other Western allies are engaging the PYD in the struggle against ISIS, the Islamic State, uh, is going to create uh, additional problems for, uh, for Turkey. It is fighting the PKK at home. It is also saying that the PYD in Syria, uh, with which now the Western countries are allied, is, is an extension of the PKK, and yet it wants the, its allies uh, to help it to deal with this issue. Now, that is going to create problems down the road, as I said, and I'm not sure that the government has, uh, has quite worked out how to, how to deal with the problems, the additional problems that are going to come uh, uh, as part of this mm. issue. Dr. Ali Reza, that is already one issue with controversy, but what about the other issue? For example, inside Europe, there's the issue of uh, immigrants. Also, that's be between uh, Syria and also Turkey as well. Turkey has been absorbing immigrants in a huge number, but this is a developing country, uh, emerging economy. So 
how can we understand after this major election in Turkey, the future policies toward this specific one? Well, it's a huge, huge issue. The, recently, the deputy prime minister uh, uh, who deals with, uh, with this issue of the Syrian refugees uh, announced that there were 2.2 uh, million refugees inside the country, that it had cost almost $8 billion of unbudgeted uh, funds. Now, Turkey, uh, in addition to, to receiving uh, these refugees, and it still says that uh, the country is open to additional refugees who might come because of the escalation of fighting in, in Syria, uh, tens of thousands have actually uh, gone to Europe. Uh, uh, the analysts uh, uh, who uh, spoke before me from uh, Europe mm. talked about how the EU countries, uh, beginning with uh, Germany, are trying to engage Turkey on this issue, but until and unless the, the Syrian uh, uh, civil war, and let's call it the civil war, is resolved, refugees will keep on coming to Turkey. Refugees will then go on or try to go on from there uh, to Europe. Now, uh, what is the position of the Turkish government? The Turkish government's uh, right. position and uh, I, I don't think they're going to change, is that Assad has to go, but Assad will stay, and if Assad stays, more refugees will come to Turkey with additional problems. All right, Mr. Gaudemont, inside EU, you understand better than I do, sir, enormous amount of inside fighting about who should shoulder more responsibilities, but obviously Turkey is at the gate, and therefore shoulder a lot of responsibility. What's the expectation from the rest of the European continent for Turkey? Do you think, from your perspective, Turkey will be able to shoulder that kind of responsibility? There are two aspects to this issue, and uh, exactly as the, 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 the analyst from CSIS Washington just said. The refugee question, there is no question that Turkey cannot handle it alone. Uh, these are millions of people, uh, and sealing the border uh, would be a tragedy. The Turks propose a kind of buffer zone inside Syria uh, to contain refugees and where they would be protected. And frankly, if I was a Syrian refugee, I would be most afraid of that uh, because of possible changes and the, the war zones are so, so, are so close by. Uh, Europe is obligated to help. There has to be a policy of admittance of refugee. We do criticize the fact that the Turks don't patrol very well their coastline, and clearly there is a lot of traffic of, of, of paid illegal immigration to Europe. But this is not a problem we're going to solve merely by authority. Uh, so more cooperation is called for. Mm. But the other issue is Turkey's impasse over Syria. The net result of Mr. Erdogan fighting uh, 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 the Kurds instead of, fi of fighting the Islamic State and holding his punches with, with Syria's Assad is that the void has been filled by Russia. If you are a Turk, if you live in Istanbul, you can see every day now the Russian right. Navy ships crossing into the Mediterranean. And we are getting nowhere. Uh, Mr. Assad's goal is to rule even okay. if the country is emptied of half of its population. Well, I don't want to put this into another debate about Syria issue alone, but rather about Turkey itself. So uh, before we go, I still Absolutely. want to invite our uh, Turkish uh, panelist, uh, Dr. Bishrayh, uh, you help us to understand this. Whether it's the issue of Syria, whether it is about the refugee crisis, uh, it has yeah. a lot to do, sir with the relations between Turkey and the West. So how will Turkey position itself in the near future with AKP's new policy, which seems to be a new trend inside the country? Okay. Of course, Turkey has some priorities, whether the AKP or another political party comes to the rule. Uh, we have the same problems. First of all, first runner-up problem is the terror in Turkey. And the second, of course, the relations with West and the European Union. And But we're, we're uh, saying that it is not, of course, acceptable from the 100,000 uh, miles from Turkey can understand what we are feeling in the border of the conflict. We are sitting in the furnace. Mm. Balkans, Kakao's region, and the and the uh, Syria, Middle East, Turkey sitting in in uh, all, all of this uh, middle of the uh, conflict areas. Now, 
we, we see the same uh, conflict and the results of the conflict in the uh, sea borders of the Turkey. But it, the refugee crisis is not okay. new for Turkey. We are, we are, we are uh, facing this problem more than uh, last 20, 25 years. Okay, we are running uh, out of time. Border between Turkey. We are running out of time. I'm sure those questions will be once again discussed in the near future. There are still, those are still questions open near, for answers. Okay, near, near, we in want the near to thank future, the three I'm of you, Dr. Savash Bishek, Mr. Bulent Ali Riza, both of you coming originally from Turkey, and also François Godemont coming from France.